Hello everyone. Welcome to Codex Tech Rust Learning Video Blog. In today's video, we will cover uh, one quick thing about XM and Open API documentation, especially how to use Swagger. Um, although you can always use Postman, but Swagger makes it easy to test your API and also provide the documentation. So let's jump right in. Let's look at the cargo.toml file first. So uh, we have, uh, in this case, XM that we are using for our web APIs. So that will have handle all the routes. Sarde, Tokyo, and the important thing is this library, uh, U2 Utopia or U2 IPA. Uh, what the name is uh, but this one will help us to integrate open api um so we have that and the swagger ui uh, these two libraries from the same github project i will provide the links in the video description S and this library provide integration with XM, I believe Tokyo, and probably one more. So you can add that as a separate feature. Um, uh, like you can see here, I have uh, features, XM extras, and in case of Swagger UI, feature XM. So first library will provide uh, information about the open API documentation, different attributes, etc. And the Swagger UI is uh, where we can see the API documentation and test out the API without needing for Postman. So these two are added. And next, let's look at the actual code. So I try to keep the code as simple as possible because it's not about how to use XM, but just wanted to show how to integrate uh, uh, this U2, U2 IPA um, library. Uh, with XM, although it is useful and pretty good, but comparing to some other languages or libraries, there is a little bit of a boilerplate code that you may not see in other places. For instance, in case of .NET or <clears throat> I know Rocket has some built-in uh, open API documentation feature. So let's just start looking at the code. So first we are declaring our um, a structure or object that our API either will be consuming or returning. So nothing special in the structure, but when we drive, we have to add to a schema. So um, this one that we can see to a schema that we have to add, this is coming from the uh, Utopia open API to a schema. So we have to add that attribute and next this line number 20 so we have to add this information here so again as i just mentioned that this is some extra boilerplate code that is not necessarily needed in other places but for this library we need it so we are adding some information one is we have the drive attribute and then open api attribute and we are saying that uh, these are the different paths that will be available so this is the required uh, field. We cannot skip this path. Then we have to provide the component. So we are saying which component. So it's a comma separated value. We Right now we only have a uh, category, but if you have multiple structures, you can list them all out here. And then we are adding some tags. This is some extra information that will show up on the, the Swagger UI and also documentation. Um, and you can, uh, when, when I run the uh, Swagger, you will be able to see how it looks. And this is um, just a simple structure API doc. That's where we're applying the attribute. So this is the requirement from the uh, U2 IPA uh, library. After that, we have a very simple async main function. Forget about this error. It seems like some issue with either the Rust analyzer or uh, uh, Vim tree sitter. So we run set up the basic XM route. So we have category for category on this line number 41. We are setting a get and, and we are setting a post. So we have two 
routes define when uh, on slash category to HTTP verbs get and post. And when we have this extra ID parameter, then we are using delete. So of course we can have as many routes and um, uh, HTTP verbs as needed. But in this case, I just took three examples to show two, th uh, two or three different scenarios. And next, this is uh, also for uh, this library, uh, Utopia. So we have to add this Swagger UI and this URL Swagger UI. So whatever URL we provide here, we'll have to use the same one when we are accessing this one on port 8081. So this is where the Swagger UI will be hosted. And then we just provide um, URL for the API doc. Uh, and the last one is the new structure that we just cre created, our API doc and open API. So we provide this information as a last route. And after that, we just simply start the accent. Nothing is special there. Now looking at the uh, actual methods that will handle those HTTP verb HTTP methods uh, when a route is called. So in case of category get, we are calling this async get all categories. So nothing changes in the implementation, but we have to apply this attribute. So we are saying utopia path, and this is a get verb. So this is a required, so it would know how to show this on the UI. Is it a get, post, or um, others? Next is what is the path for this one? So that's also helping with the documentation. And the last part is what are the responses expected from this one? So if we don't provide anything, it will not show anything on the UI, but if we know what responses will be expected from this route uh, slash category for get HTTP verb. So we'll provide that information. In this case, we are just providing 404 and 200. And body, we are saying it will return and uh, it will return an array of category or a vector of category. So if we just provide category without the square brackets, it will assume we are just returning single value. And that is it for this part. Next one is, so this, this one just to keep simple, I did not add a lot of information but on line 51. If you see, I have documentation comment from rest. So whatever you provide with these three slashes, forward slash, and then um, some text, this will be added as the comment or documentation of the UI. So I will show you that next one. In fact, let's just run it right now and see how it looks for the get and um, the overall documentation. So if I run, okay. So that will run. Now it is running on port 8081. So let's back, go back to the code and just observe a few of these things in the browser. So I will go to the host 8081, Swagger UI. So that's how it is loaded. So a few things you can see, uh, this was the URL that we provided in the beginning when we were setting the route. Uh, it shows up down here too. And uh, if you remember, we provide the sample product. This is a sample accent swagger integration. So if I go back to the code, this was defined right here when we are setting the actual structure. So this is the overall project description and the name. And now for each route, let's, if we go to this get route, so we have basic documentation that sample API and point summary. So so let's see that one. Uh, so over here, this get, we can see that documentation is showing up, sample API endpoint. So whatever we provided with the documentation comment it shows up there. And next, let's see the status for 200, 400 and the return type. So if I expand on this one, so I can see that we have 200 and 400. These are the two defined HTTP code, return codes and um, in the description now for the first one it is showing this it will return an array of category it is able to actually read the category object uh, and that is happening because of the two schema that we added on top so it is able to show all the fields that are available 
and if we run uh, this is where we can just run it and it will uh, bring some data back some uh, fake data and the response headers etc so it is uh, providing all the documentation that is necessary for anyone to test and uh, also they can uh, test on the application api from there so let's look, let's look at the other two example where i have some extra other documentation comments or uh, properties added so if i go further down so after get so in this case for the post i have two lines so in the get i have one line that was minimum uh, if you want to add some documentation it is not required but in this case if you have one line with the documentation comment then space another line so this will add differently on the ui so in get if i expand it just shows the description but in case of post it will show that extra message so if there are some extra details that you don't want in the summary so first documentation comment is for summary other one is detail so if you want some more details you can add that on a third line after uh, you add one extra space and then we have in this case um, first few things are same we have the verb that is used and now we can also provide request body so since this is a post we are expecting some input so there's using request body we can define what is the expectation so we're trying to match it with the uh, um, our function definition here where we are saying uh, we are expecting json category so that's the object that we're expecting and if you notice in case of a status 200 and 400 i have an extra uh, attributes i'm also passing description uh, previously in the get i did not have it so we can provide our own custom description and body is same like it will return a category object so if i go back here so i can see request body so it, it is telling me that this is the required request body that need to be provided and then uh, for 200 and 400 just telling the user that what is the description of this code so not found error and in case of uh, status is okay then what will be the expected return value so if i just try to run it again so this is where it is good like it already provided a bunch of information so i can just fill out quickly uh, i can construct my http request uh, without worrying about what are the correct uh, object property that i need to fill out so test value and let's see url something and if i execute now it will run it will show what was the crawl command that is used uh, to make this request what is the url and now this is the data that is being returned so i was passing some value but i just just to show that it's coming from the server i just changed it to a different id just to show the difference it's a fake value so that's um, that was another extra detail like we can provide some of the description and we have the request body that will help with um, for the user when they are looking at the code so last one is this um, uh, delete one so it is pretty same but in this case since we are passing a parameter so instead of request body this is another use case we can provide the parameters so we are taking the route path what is the expectation uh, so we are saying we want id that will be uh, this type use size is part of the path and what is the description other uh, setting other stuff is same and um, uh, in this case i just put some logic if it is 8081 it will return okay otherwise it will return error so let's try this one and um, see the documentation as well so we have the delete category and we know in the route we are expecting id uh, and it's going to define it properly that id is an integer is part of the path in the route path and what is the description so that will help anyone who's looking at it and now if i um, run this code or call this api so um, if i just provide any random id it should come back with an error so error not found response is false this should the curl command and now if i uh, actually delete the correct id so there will be a different response it says 200 and the value is true so all this is documented like it will show 200 uh, if no error in the delete function otherwise HTTP not found error 
So that's how we can define different um, return types, inputs, and the body, and also for the documentation. And with the Swagger UI, it just makes it so much easier for uh, us and uh, testers, or if anyone else that is consuming to uh, look at the API documentation directly and also be able to execute them. That is it for today's video. I will provide some useful links in the video description below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.